<laughs> oh my god look at the production value new york jeffrey is bringing to the lol lion screen <laughs> Yeah, these look at these, these high quality production. My special effects team came here making my headphones go in and out of the background. <laughs> that was perfect though. It sounded a lot like the music you'd have heard on ESPN in the late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> it was real fun. Um, oh boy, it was very fun. How are you? I, you have to, uh, I haven't seen you yet. You haven't seen me yet because we made a, a deal last week. I picked the Falcons and... Uh, Todd Gurley made sure that uh, the Lions won. So mm -hmm. I have to wear a costume for this, uh, this installment, and you have yet to see it. So I am going to start my video right now. Yeah, let me see it. All right, here we go. Let me see. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I figured the, it was appropriate. You're the pencil. <laughs> I'm the pencil that Matt Patricia keeps behind his un-Q-tipped ear. You know that man doesn't have any good ear hygiene. <laughs> you look great. This is a fun. I like seeing you as a little, you know, a pencil there, the beard coming out of the bottom a little bit. That's you know, that's what it's got to be. And then I've also got this, which I will be using to exercise my points. Just be like, now listen, here's what oh, I really okay. think is going on. But uh, yeah, Just so a, this a is pencil a, holding another pencil. That's right. And then and then hold on, there's a baby pencil. Oh <laughs> got, boy, look at that. You could be a weird pencil drummer. <laughs> For the number two world's best band. Number two pencil. Uh, and our number two win in a row, Jeff. <laughs> There's so many things tied into this costume. There's... <laughs> Holy Ticonderoga. <laughs> Holy Ticonderoga, we are on a hot streak. I told you, I'm telling I'm telling you, 10 and 6, we're going to look at that. It's a little Detroit miracle, huh? <laughs> that was... Uh... That was really something else. I can't believe, uh, especially with, what was it, uh, Penn State in Indiana having the exact same thing happen the night before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. That's why I picked the Lions. You just knew this all week? Yeah, so I was like, they're going to gonna open up, then they're going to get the ball back. I was like, it was, it was all designed plays, I think. I, uh, Patricia put all this together. He know? orchestrated all that? Mm -hmm. He orchestrated, yeah. He was like, I want him losing you know and then we'll like sneak in and then we'll win him in a come he, he planned the whole thing you so, have really uh so so i mean just two wins in a row and you have really nestled into matt patricia's yeah. warm bosom haven't you probably the best coach in the history of coaching ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i still don't believe in him <laughs> <laughs> in all of coaching, he's been he's the best in the history, I think, of coaching. Just to Shula, out, you know. Walsh, mm -hmm. Lombardi, Belichick, mm -hmm. Patricia. His players are so good they can tackle you or let you score a touchdown when you don't want it. Like he's he's like trained them to do all that. Like you you know, you hold on for the last second, then you let go, you know, and then it, it shoots him into the end zone. Well, they have been preparing for that uh, that touchdown all year long because they were just letting people get into the end zone all of year, <laughs> all up until this point. So, like, they were yeah. prepared for that. That was practice. Yeah, that was practice. He was practicing. He was like, hey, let a guy blow 10 yards by you. And they're like, coach, how do I do that? And then he trained them. And now when they need it, they can just let anybody through at the right time. Also, let's let's not uh, let's not look away from the fact this team this week looked mm -hmm. very – hydrated very yeah, they looked, they looked hydrated i'll say it the defense played well you know i mean yeah they uh they held what they held todd Gurley to 63 yards on 27 carries he could mm -hmm. not get he could not uh find a lane for the life of him until that one we at the very yeah, end we shut the run game down yeah and uh, do you count that that touchdown like i don't even can really count that against the defense they like wanted him I mean, so really, we held the Falcons to uh, whatever seventeen. See, but now you're getting you're getting picky because if we wouldn't have held him to the, if we wouldn't if we would have held the touchdown, they would have won the game. So you kind of have to put that touchdown on the defense, otherwise Atlanta comes away with the victory. Well, see, the, deep, the that touchdown though is a positive. That's a positive for the defense. So actually, I think it takes it takes away that one and the next one, and that's how well the defense. 
Well, that is some very interesting math. That's I don't know good. what. Yeah. I don't this know the, what kind of Sudoku logic you came up with there, but you know what? I like it. You said it confidently, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go with it. Yeah, this is the best defense in the history of the NFL. Just you well, wait. You know, I don't know about that because they did give up over 400 total yards. <laughs> but <laughs> all, all, all yards, though, mostly just yards. Uh, you know what? Trey Flowers we... did something impactful. A couple uh, things. Yeah, he got a, he, recall, he got a fumble and then he, he tipped a ball that would have led that, to a big tip. That tip was a big tip. And this is coming from a pencil. This is coming, and, and I mean, <laughs> it's about as that was about as sharp a play as uh, you can. <laughs> you know yep. what? And here's the thing: you want to talk about Trey Flowers tipping that ball, that sharp tip that he had. But you know That's what? Good. It was Romeo Okwara who led the defense did he, he he was leading the defense he's led the defense all year he had two sacks yesterday three tackles for a loss or two two sacks two tackles for a loss and he uh, hit the quarterback three times i don't mm -hmm. i don't have his season long stats right now but uh he has been beyond the shadow of a dart our, our best player on defense uh this season yeah. so far most and consistent that, absolutely and that is the uh that's the older brother yes that's the older romeo and then julian who is currently on ir but uh yeah, he had uh, – that's – Romeo's got four sacks now um, so on the season. So he's our guy. Okay, we just have to hold his brother hostage. Yeah, and he's averaging about three tackles a uh, game, which, you know, from a defensive end edge rusher standpoint, that's, that's a solid statistic. That's pretty good. And also, we just, you know, we got his brother. We're like, hey, if you don't get any sacks – your brother's going to get it, you know? I want to know what it was like growing up in their house because the uh, the parents obviously were fans of Shakespeare with Romeo and Julian because mm -hmm, it was yep. of what? What was that like? Do you think they speak Old English to each other? That's it, that Shakespearean family? Yeah. Oh, Do you I think bet, that they're very uh, romantic? I, I mean, I bet their dad had a, uh, had a taste for flair, you know? But he also liked a hard hit. You know, he'd be like, hey. So he like so Ric Flair. He would, he, oh, he'd be like, there's violent. no harder hitting flair than the nature boy, Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Their dad was like, uh, get your thouest butt out there and sack the quarterback. <laughs> thy <laughs> will pressure this quarterback or thou shall not eat yeah. dinner. Thou fill thy gaps. <laughs> <laughs> you love you know, Shakespeare. You love, you love a good sack. Thou fill, thou shall fill thy gaps. I think that's the name of that's the name of this episode for sure. Yeah. Thou shall fill like, thy gaps. Like dad, you know, their mom's like roll her eyes. She's like, I liked him because of the Shakespeare. The football was a bit of a drawback. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they had to take off like the homecoming game because they had the big drama production. They yeah, were <laughs> you'd, you'd be like, where hast thou turnovers? <laughs> The <laughs> I'm just seeing now that we're talking about it. I'm seeing like a real glee scenario in their <laughs> high school. Like I gotta go to practice. Well, you gotta you gotta rehearse for this play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, Julian. Da -da -da -da, you know, and then cut to a, later in the day, they're taking ankles out. You know, <laughs> Julian. I sh I assure you that this production's choreography is gonna help you with your swim move coming around the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they did That's Hamlet, they held a football helmet. <laughs> with uh yeah with just a skeleton detail detail on it <laughs> yeah yeah it was the skull of aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that would be the funniest like imagine going to that school where all the drama productions are just jocked up to the, the <laughs> yeah they like each one equally they like yeah. Oh, yeah we like drama and we love we love them both <laughs> equally honest <laughs> that was our family yeah it's a wild place to grow up and i'm glad how have we not heard here. more about this school I don't know, but hopefully some more kids come out of there. I'd keep an eye on them. I was a scout. That's you know? what public education should be striving for, is a, a school system where they encourage athletics and the arts. Mm -hmm. That's the proper school, you know? What and a, I hope it translates over here. It looks like uh, Jamie Collins has a little little taste for theater, huh? <laughs> Jamie Collins. <laughs> How about after him, him celebrating? After him trying to headbutt that ref too in the uh, first season, like he's really made himself a great, like a villain you would love, like a villain like Thanos from the Avengers, where you get what he's trying to do, but you mm -hmm. don't agree with it. Oh Very yeah, sympathetic he's, villain. Sure, yeah, he's almost an anti-hero. I love him. <laughs> I love, 
the picture of, of girly scoring and then it's, it's, it's Collins just throwing yeah. his hands. He <laughs> celebrates. I love it. I love a celebration. Well, we love, uh, we love Jamie Collins. We discussed how much we love Duran Harmon. Let's talk mm-hmm. about um, Danny Shelton, who is another guy that we got from the Patriots and our, I don't know what pick we got him. It was sixth or seventh round, I think. John Pinacini. Oh, Did you yeah. see those guys yesterday? Those are two of the biggest men I have seen standing side by side. Our defensive tackles are enormous. Yeah, we got a couple couple big boys in there finally doing their job. Oh. I don't know what they've been doing. They were letting the runners right through, but now they're like, hey, did you watch you guys forget you were big? It's like they forgot, and then they would remind them. They, you know how they got remind, reminded? How they get reminded? Romeo Aquara came up to them in defensive practice and put his hand on their shoulder pads and said, thou shalt, thou shalt fill thy gaps. Oh, yeah, and then and, and then Peter C's filling the gaps. <laughs> He's, he's he's really stuffing those gaps hard. Yeah, yeah, God, that joke will always be – I hope he becomes a Hall of Famer for that joke. He just, I mean, based on the jokes he's had to take at his expense, he's got to uh, he's got to be a Hall of Famer on that alone. I would hope right? so. But they are. They're doing – they're stopping that run. I mean – They is, are. Is, 44 and 63 Shelton? to the top, yeah. Really? Is he finally – who's the other guy we got? Sylvester? Uh, Nick Williams. Nick Williams, how's he? Is he fine? He's been okay. I don't think he's got too many uh, stats on there, but he's plugging it up. He had uh, he had two tackles yesterday, um, and then throughout the season he has had nothing huge. He had four tackles. Where are the recent games? There they are. His biggest game was against Arizona where he had three. He's got no sacks. Uh, mm, is Penasini yeah. doing better? Penasini has really, really come on. Um, wow. He had five tackles against New Orleans. Uh, he's got no sacks either, but yeah, we need to get some he's penis. playing real well. Yeah, we need to get some penis and sacks. Six but. two three twenty five for him, and Danny Shelton is six two three thirty five. Those are some real big fellers. We got some big fellers out there. <laughs> I mean, that's what we do. We stuff. I mean, what they were saying, you know, from the broadcast. This is what I heard. The Lions like to build a wall and seal the edge. You know, that's what we're doing, and then I'm seeing it. You see it? You see the wall being built and the edge getting sealed? The defense has come a long way, and I have uh-huh. to imagine that it's because they're playing a, a zone scheme now. Yeah, they added zone, and I don't understand why they just decided to add zone. Well, I think Matt Patricia was far too arrogant over the past uh, two seasons coming in and playing his man-to-man coverage because he came from the Patriots and only the Patriots at certain times had played more man coverage than we were. He was just doing that. And then I don't know what it was, but they, they switched to scheme and uh, to zone and they're shutting people down. Now, again, the, the offense did not play or the defense did not play incredible because Matt Ryan still threw for 340 yards, 338 yards, sure, but only one was- touchdown. Yeah, he had a he had a couple good solid drives. I mean, especially that one where he went to it, went for it on fourth, and then it got turned over on downs, and then mm-hmm. they just marched it right back. And we just couldn't seem to stop. We couldn't stop Julio. Julio like, Jones okay. is this generation's Calvin Johnson. I mean, we could not stop that man. He kept sneaking in. He kept finding our soft little zones. He was just he's taking, so taking a nap. Good. He's so good at finding a soft zone. I can <laughs> send me out there. I don't know where I'm going. If you didn't know any better, you'd think his name was Penasini. Um, <laughs> yeah, he just gets in that soft zone, and he, he just sits there, and then you forget about him somehow, and then there he is. He's right underneath your chin, catching a touchdown. Right I mean, underneath <laughs> your chin. <laughs> you know, we gotta figure, they had to figure out a way to stop that guy. They slowed him down. You know, he didn't, he didn't destroy us like he possibly could have. But, I mean, he was still out there working pretty hard. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, too. He had a lot of drops yesterday. Calvin Ridley did? Yeah, he did not uh, – he, he, he had a he – they said it in the game, and I will agree, he had to work for it. But as we're talking about the Falcons receivers, let's go back and look at the uh, Lions receivers. Marvin Jones finally showed up, had a stat mm-hmm. line. He can still he five, stretch and catch. He had five for 80 on six targets. Danny Amendola had three for 62 on four targets. Hawkinson had five for 59 and a touchdown on six targets. And uh, DeAndre Swift pulled in four for 21 on five targets. But the one that I saved for the last was old. Oh, is it? AG19. Uh, Jesse James. Jesse James <laughs> did not register a stat yesterday uh, as far it. as receiving goes. That's what I want to talk about. We got to pay this, man. 
we got to pay Kenny Galladay his money. How about what was his numbers? His numbers yesterday, six receptions on seven targets for 114 yards. And those catches that he was making yesterday oh were God. contested. They were. He was just he was catching him with a, with a guy's arm in, the, in his face. He was catching the football and an arm. He got two things. And then there's he was jumping up. He's acrobatics. He got he caught two back. things. One of them wasn't COVID, right? Because we need him on the field. Yeah, we can't afford a COVID scare. It's <laughs> you know, this be very Lions thing for our whole team to get it. Yeah. But I think you know he was making some great catches. I played mm-hmm. him on my fantasy team because I drafted him. You well, know, then you should play him. Yeah, absolutely. I, I played him, and he was he was great. He put he's puts him up, and it, he, we gotta pay him. Well, the, the argument right now is a lot of what I'm reading is they're trying to decide who are they going to pay, Tracy Walker or Kenny Galladay. And I don't even understand how that's a discussion. I love Tracy Walker. I think he is going to be a real fine safety in the league. But if it comes down to throwing money at number 19 or number 21, you throw that money at number 19. You could. I mean, you could, you know, sign, sign Walker and then franchise Kenny. Uh, that's a good way to uh, disgruntle yet another one of our superstars. You think so? Oh, yeah. I Kenny mean, takes would... big hits. Kenny is getting – he's going up there. He's getting balls. He blocks. Those catches that he makes a lot of the time are contested. I mean, he's – he plays the type of game where he could get hurt. So to franchise him, I mean, especially with what happened to Dak this year, you know, it's – you get paid, but it's just right here. But that's the, that's the problem. You just said he gets hurt, you know, so you want to give him a long term with this style of play. And then he, what, gets hurt in two years? He's not the same guy? That's, that's uh, something to consider. That's something to that, wonder. That is. I would uh, offer him, I would like do, I would do a three year deal with him. Well, like a three. <laughs> what would you pay him? I would want to do like a long one. Would you pay him? Years. I'm fine with three, though I think realistically, anything under five is unrealistic for a player of his caliber, especially with he's only, what, in his third or fourth year? Mm-hmm, something like that. Uh, but they're saying he is worth top 10 money. Mm-hmm, sure. But a lot of people are saying he's worth top five money, which is around $17 million a year. Are you paying him that? Top five? I don't know about top five. I'd pay him top 10. I think he's like a Mike Evans. I think he's yeah, very but, good. But I mean, I mean like you said, they're, if, they're, if the debate is him or Walker – I mean, there's a lot of weapons we still have on this offense. Listen to – Whereas this defense is is the bad part. Okay. Listen to his numbers over the – since he came back from his injury. He got targeted seven times in his return against Arizona. He had six catches for 57 yards and one touchdown, a long of 19, averaging 50 – averaging nine and a half. The next week – against New Orleans. He got targeted eight times and was essentially taken out of the game because he, he, he had four receptions for 62 yards and a touchdown long of 17. The next game against Jacksonville, we saw what he did. Six targets, four receptions, 105 yards, uh, and then this week, six on seven for 114. I mean, you can cover him, but it's not going to do you any good because he's going to get up there and get his hands on it. I think you got to yeah. pay this guy. You want to? Yeah, you see, you think we got a super pay him? I, I mean, I'm all for it too. If they wanted to decide to pay him, I don't want to overpay. Sure, I would think like if we could get away with like a 16 million a year, I would do that. You know, 16 million dollars. I mean, that's right up there in the top five. That's right up there in the top five range. That's a million dollars left. Less, you know, we're saving now. <laughs> Every <laughs> million dollars less for Kenny Galladay over three years, three to five years. I, I say you pay him because I don't know, man. Tracy Walker is very good though. I just think the defense needs all the all the help and get. I mean, we'll see. Who knows? Well, we could always we'll see where we're even at at the point even thinking about resigning him or just trading because we're in a rebuild mode. We could also franchise him and trade him. Who knows? Um, that would be interesting. That would be and see what we get because you could get talking. you could get a lot for Kenny Galladay. We've got a couple pieces on our team where you trade them and you're getting at least first round picks back for them. Yeah, it depends on – yeah, if we're going on a fire sale, which I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to – we are buyers in this market. Knock on wood for the Jets defensive end. You know, see if there's anybody – maybe the Vikings let some people go. It could just get better from here on out. I think we're buyers because we're looking to make the playoffs, and we're not going to be throwing people out. We're going to be adding somebody. And we do have – moves. We do have uh, cap space to use. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And they have to be buyers because they're playing for their jobs. I mean, honestly, you have to imagine if they don't make the playoffs, Quinn and Patricia are fired. Even And uh, they have to make the playoffs, especially with them adding a seventh playoff team. Yeah, right? The odds of them, like, not. I think – it might get a little crowded because everybody over in the NFC, uh, what West. the West with the Niners, good lord, we're gonna have to compete with that entire division to make play. That division oh. is so good. It's wild. Yeah, and then, I mean, I mean luckily we have the tiebreaker over Arizona. That yeah. might mean something. Oh god, but, if we sneak in over that tiebreaker. I mean, they just took down Seattle, and I don't see them having a close enough record to where we have to be tied with them. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I think it's all starting to come together. Maybe the secondary looked great too. You know, if we get Trufant back, Coleman yeah. back was going to be huge. We need. I want Coleman back so bad. Yeah, out of the nickel. I agree. I, I hate Roberts. I don't like Roberts back there. Not. Yeah, he seems like a just a a project. You know, who led our team in tackles yesterday was Jaron Curse, who is another safety that we have. You know, we're talking about he Tracy Walker. Back. Yep, mm-hmm. we're happy with Duran Harmon, as we've said. Can you afford to let Tracy Walker? walk if you think J. Ron Curse can come in and fill some sort of role with Jerron Harmon and then have Will Harris back him up. I don't know. That's something too. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of places to go with this team. I mean, I think, and it's all going to come down to obviously the next week. This entire season is <laughs> going to be, it all boils down to next week. We are never like in a comfortable, oh no, we should be fine. We should beat them, but if not, we're still all right. Every single game from here on out, we're like, well, this one's going to be even harder and we need it. Well, we've got the Colts, the Vikings and Washington coming up, um, which obviously we've discussed are all very winnable games. However, the Colts are going to be very tough and they are who we are playing next week coming off a bye, which obviously does. Yeah. Which obviously does wonders for a team because that's Mm -hmm. when we made our turnaround. They have one of the best offensive lines in my opinion. uh, And I think this is going to be a real test to see whether or not our rush defense is actually fixed. Right. That's true. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, we should, uh, we should, we need to see if we can hold off the run and slow down rivers, but we always, I feel like we always have rivers numbers. Yeah. Rivers has not been playing very well this year, but on the other side of the ball, they are statistically one of the top defenses in the league. Are they really? Yeah, the Colts has got a real good squad. Oh, boy. Well, sort of the Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> just, just erase you, that. You gonna erase that for the record? <laughs> One of the best defenses we've ever had to face. It looked like they were. <laughs> it, <laughs> that, by the way, for as dramatic as that game was yesterday, it was 23-22. Uh, to 22. Yeah, it was a pretty low-scoring affair. It should have been a shootout. I mean, that says something about – let me ask you this, because we have played, obviously, um, against the Falcons, who just put up 40 on the Minnesota Vikings. We, they only put up 22 on us. Does that speak to our defense, or did, does the fact that we only put up 23 on their defense speak to our offense is minnesota's offense that much better than ours and is defense our defense that much better than the vikings Ooh, i think our defense is better than the vikings okay but i think i think our offense is uh it's hard to say what our offense is i can't tell if it's play calling or if, i mean stafford seems to be able to turn it on but not always he's looked very good the past two weeks he looks he confident looked- he looks decisive he's making he all those he- weird throws from all over the place yeah, he's got some weird throws, but he keeps, like, missing crucial moments to where he even get in these positions. Like, he'll be moving it, like, then it, then, then, then it, just going down, you know, the field, just moving around. And then, and then finally you get into a tough spot, and then we just putter and it fails. And like, what? He stalls out a little too much. He stalls I out, think but we, think about what he did. He's responsible for getting uh, attention on that 12th man. Um, on that was the a good call. That was, that was smart. That was a smart that thing was him. To do. And uh, he bought time to get that play to Hawkinson. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. for everything he does, you know, that might not be the most favorable thing here as a fan of Detroit Lions. He does so much well. I love Matthew Stafford. And I've never said anything otherwise. (laughs) Yeah, he has played very well. But, I mean, also this, speaking of that 12th man, you got to give credit to the coach there, huh? I know you hate the guy, and I think he's the greatest coach of all time, but 
he didn't go for that fake punt to stall it out to make sure he could throw you know, that challenge flag. You know who I'm going to give credit to? I'm going to give credit to the coach. Coach Belichick, because Patricia learned that you can exploit the rules from Belichick. I don't I, – I, I'm willing to put money down that next season you will not be able to challenge a play – because like right now you can't challenge a play if the ball is snapped. So people run up to the line, they snap it so you can't get it done. I bet you they're not going to allow you to snap the ball if the play clock dies. Because that's, uh. that's like equivalent to a snap, in my opinion. But that was Matt Patricia being aware of the rules and mm-hmm. exploiting them a la Bill Belichick. So kudos to you, mm-hmm. Bill Belichick. No, that was Matt Patricia <laughs> did it. He's the, I know you don't want to give him credit. That's like saying when Stafford pointed out and they go, oh, he must, he got that from Rogers. Rogers, that's a Rogers move right there. You know, they've wow, never a, been on the same team. <laughs> I mean, that's what the announcers said. And that's they go, oh, that's a Rogers <laughs> thing. You know, nobody gives him credit. You're not giving my main man. Matt Patricia credit oh. for his smart, you know, sure he learned, but everything, what does that mean? Everything I learned from school isn't mine either. You know, I, I go two plus two is four. And they go, yeah, that's, yeah, but Jeff, that's from Mrs. Kennedy. She, she taught him that in second grade. Like, and you know Kennedy? what? She deserves that kind of credit because <laughs> teachers are wildly underpaid. Yeah. Well, she'll never get it. You know, I'll never give any of these turd teachers credit. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Matt Patricia. <laughs> I'm born. the genius. Yeah, it was no one has knowledge. Bo- <laughs> <laughs> no one who's in and no one in my past has ever been responsible for anything I've become. I did I pulled myself up by the bootstraps, which mm-hmm. by the way, I made by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody taught me nothing. I learned it all on my own. <laughs> Um, well, anyways, I think what I mean, what a wild ride. That that was the wildest game I have seen. I I've watched replays a couple times already. Oh, baby. Pe- people were really excited, and people are I think I will be more sold on the team if we come away with a victory this week. Because you know what we've been doing? I, mean, I feel like we've been saying that for the past four weeks. You've been every saying week, that. Every week. I'll be I'll be impressed with you. You have wins. that was all you, Jeffrey. One more. Nobody gets impressed anymore. <laughs> I want them to beat a good team, and the Colts, record-wise, are a good team. What's and I, uh, I can tell you. Just let me put my pencil down. Indianapolis <laughs> Colts. Their oh, record is using a computer. It's very. <laughs> it's their like record a, like a far is side. currently. <laughs> Oh, you think this would be easier to uh, navigate, but it's, yeah, they really it's make hard you, to find. They it. really make you looking for it. Yeah. Um, it is. They are currently four and two. Oh, so um, they have a better record. Yep, and they are. They've they've only given up a hundred and fifteen points, which is the best in their division. Um, I only see so on the in the on the AFC side of things, one team that has given up less one hundred four, and that is. Um, the Ravens. Mm. And we're playing the Dolphins have given up we... 113, but they've also had not had their bye. So. Oh, okay. We play in Colts at what? Home or Lucas? We are playing them at Lucas. No, I'm sorry. Oh. We're, we're home. We're home. Oh, we're home? Yeah. Oof. All right. We'll see. I don't. Apparently, we have a harder time at home. We've been doing road. These have been road wins. That's true, but you know what they say. I mean, any anyone you talk to with with mental instabilities or inconsistencies or something that just seems a little off, they always have problems at home, but they never want to talk about it. Yeah, the whole theme is uh, mm-hmm. is what being mm-hmm. <laughs> just being abused by the city. Is that what you're mm-hmm. saying? Being being abused by their the Ford Field <laughs> father, Matt Patricia, mm-hmm. verbally. If Matt Patricia could, I guarantee you Matt Patricia has fantasized about throwing chairs at players like Bobby Knight. You think so? I do. Mm, I think you get too winded too fast. <laughs> yeah, we do better on the road because we do uh, – apparently Lions, we like a little crowd. We like a little, we like a little group of haters in the crowd. A little energy. I get that. Mm-hmm. And at Ford Field, you don't get no energy. You know, because Michigan – That's true. With that Democratic governor – <laughs> shutting everything down for that this woman <laughs> <laughs> um also what do we do against what was the score against the jacksonville jaguars was 34 16 
they're a really bad team. We beat the Cardinals by three. We beat the Falcons by one. I would like to. I, I would like to see us get a more um, authoritative win. Last yeah, year we would lose all these close, these one possession games, and this year it seems like we've taken a couple of them. Maybe that is riding the ship, but I would like to see us impose our will on a team. I would like to see us. I mean, we did it with Jackson. <sighs> So did every other team. Yeah, but I mean, you know, every time you go, you know, I want to see if they can do it uh, with a better one. No one's ever satisfied. And then I'll tell you this, it's not going to be against the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I know who we'll the... I them, but I don't think it's going to be authority. You know who the Jacksonville Jaguars lone victory came against? Was it the Colts? It was the Colts by seven. Really? Yeah, just look at yep. that game plan. And what were they doing? I bet they were running the ball. Um... The Jags? The, a bit yeah, ball. I mean, in that game, James Robinson had 62. Um, no, their receivers didn't have – it comes down to the Colts. The Colts had a real bad game. Phillip Rivers threw for 363 yards and two interceptions. Uh, that's the game that Marlon Mack went down in. Mm. Yeah, I can't believe they lost that game. Okay. So, yeah, just make Rivers pay for his mistakes. Yeah. That's going to be big. We're going to have to make him pay for his mistakes. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those nine little bastards. That's where I was going to go, but you beat me to it. Uh, and I, that's why this is so fun for me. We're on the same page on everything except for our feelings about Matt Patricia. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you hate him. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Um, <laughs> I can't with you. I can't. <laughs> I can't wait to see a you know a pencil statue in downtown. I would, I would get on board with the pencil statue. Mm -hmm. It'll come. I'm sure it'll come after you know we win the Super Bowl in these COVID times. You know we're playing at home. Colts are going down, and it's easy street from there on out. And then we just keep the iron hot. It is anything but easy street from there on out because after mm -hmm. we get done with the Redskins, or I'm sorry, the Washington football team mm -hmm. and uh, the Vikings, it's pretty difficult games. Yeah. We, no, those are the, we have what green Bay, right? We talked about this it last weekend. You, come. this is where this you is where thought, my losses. Yep. We've got the Panthers who will be returning Christian McCaffrey. Then we have the Houston Texans on not, Thanksgiving. You know, you know, I'm not even afraid of a run game anymore. I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not even scared of a runner. Well, we're just going to stop it. I don't care who's running the ball. I don't care yeah. if it's the rating MVP. We're going to shut him down. Mean, yeah, doesn't matter. You know, we got a run game? Not anymore. Because you know? thou, fill, thou shalt fill those gaps. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm not even worried about a run game. I'm worried about elite passers, and that is it. Well, we don't. I mean, Deshaun Watson technically is an elite passer. Sure. You can count him. You can count Tom Brady. You can count Aaron Rodgers. After that, I don't see one. And that's why yeah, I'm I mean, we've got six. Teddy, Broad, Teddy Bridgewater, yeah. Nick Foles. So it goes Panthers, Texans, Bears, Packers, Titans, Bucks, Vikings. It's not easy street. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I give up three, you know, but I think we're going we're gonna to get these Colts and we're going to get the Vikings. And you know what? Washington. We're going to go on a big hot run and we're going to be a four, talk of the town. Five, six, seven. You're, you're saying we're going to go seven and three. Mm -hmm. over these next 10 games. Yep, we're going Giving seven. you the 10 and 6 that you had alluded to. Mm -hmm. These are my numbers, and I'll say it again I will, uh, until we lose. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could go 7 and 9. I, I don't see us having a winning record this year. Okay. Well, Which would be an improvement. For, I mean, that would be Matt Patricia's best season, but how can you not fire him at 7 and 9 if uh, Jim Caldwell was 11 and 5, 9 and 7, 7 and 9, and 9 and 7? Right. But I mean, that's like, you know, no, one, no one's gonna be like, hey, would he got fired if the guy still wants to keep him? If Quinn still's like, you can do it, Matt Patricia, you know, and he's like, he believed in me. That could be a, <laughs> they got like a little connection there. Why are Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn the oldest men ever sitting at a park bench feeding the geese? Why is that the voice that you gave both of them? I love you, Bob Quinn. Thanks for giving me another chance. Uh, oh, oh Matty, you know I believe in you and have since our days. Ah, oh, there's the geese. <laughs> Jim Caldwell would have been fired for less, uh, but I still love you. 
you know, it's like a nice relationship. So if he can sneak in, save his job. I don't think For he's... Halloween, um, do you think Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn are being the old Muppets that complain from the top of the theater? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what's the <laughs> name of Waldorf? Waldorf uh, and Gromit? Or, like, I don't know. Gromit? Waldorf no, I think and... Gromit's from... Uh, uh, You're right. Wallace and Gromit. He's the dog in the claymation. Waldorf and Statler. Statler. Yeah. Yeah, I always remember Waldorf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's them. That's what they're doing. They're Statler doing just them. gets no love from you at all? I always forget about Statler. <laughs> Statler looks like an oil baron, and Waldorf looks like a uh, Albert Einstein, really. Yeah. You know yeah. my favorite one is, though? If you ask me, it's, uh, it's Matthew Statler. <laughs> yeah look at that huh oh Our positivity i hate it <laughs> <laughs> but now i do want if i mean we only get like 200 views a week but if anyone out there is watching and just wants to photoshop matthew stafford's jersey onto statler i would really appreciate that yeah much. come on somebody do it on the internet <laughs> <laughs> all right so what's your prediction for next week jeff the oh, Indianapolis yeah, Colts traveling to Ford Field to play the Detroit Lions hot off of a two-game win streak following their bye. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I still think Detroit's going to win it. I think we're going to keep with this gravy train rolling. I expect some mistakes, some picks coming out of Phillip Rivers. I think we always got his number. I think we got his number again. I think we, we don't we don't run. He can't run. We're going to take his run game away. Okay. One of the greatest run stoppers <laughs> in the history of football ever existing. Um, and then he's going to be forced to throw, and that's when he always makes mistakes. We'll pick those off, and uh, I think we're going to dink and dunk him. Expect a lot of field goals out of Detroit to win this game. I expect a low scoring affair. And I'm going to say we're going to win. You ready for this one? 15 12. Wow. <laughs> 15. So. I don't, isn't that the only way we could get that done with just five field goals? You're like a safety in there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying a touchdown, a field goal, a field goal, and a safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. or, or nothing but field goals. <laughs> uh, I mean, Prater, he's, he's rebounded. He's, he's back there kicking the boot. Mm -hmm. I think um, we're going to kick him to death. I think that the Lions are riding high. I think that uh, they're buying into whatever their coordinators are preaching because I don't think anyone on the team believes in anything Patricia has to say. And I am not on a team, but I do. I believe it all. <laughs> and I think that this is going to be Jonathan Taylor's coming out party you've got a jonathan taylor running back who was picked after deandre swift who everybody's talking about real big i think jonathan taylor has got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder he's running behind the best offensive line in the game in my opinion off of a bye week everyone freshly rested i do think it is going to be close i think however uh the indianapolis colts will come out on top, and I'm going to guess probably a 21-17. And we are going to – I think we, what's going to happen is it's going to end um, – it's going to be a game scripted very much like Atlanta, but instead of winning on that final drive, Indianapolis defense is going to stop us. Oh, okay. I mean, it's going to be a game till the end. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you're incorrect. And what are you going to do if you lose? <laughs> what about you? I was just going to ask, what kind of stakes do you want to uh, put on this put on this game? Um, let me think. Hmm. Funny facial hair. I'll do that. <laughs> I don't know what I would be able to do. This is yeah, kind you of keep yours. We'll I figure it out. One. We'll figure okay. it out through text and then surprise the uh, viewers. But that is it for this week. Jeff, why don't you play us out? Oh, yeah. Let me play you out here real quick. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just hang in there. Ow. Oh, look at that. And while you're uh, grabbing the, uh, the organ, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. tell us how your hand is from jumping that turnstile. Have you healed oh, up? Oh, it, it's back. I'm healed up. You know, I'm That's back. Good. I can move. It's a little sore, though. But we're getting better. 
every day. Just like those lions. And that is it for this week. For New York Jeffrey, I'm Zach Martina. <laughs> Go Lions! <laughs>